This video is gonna be about books. It's gonna be about books. Yeah, this video is gonna be about books. I'm sort of on a streak or a roll about making videos, whoa, about things that have changed me as a person. So I thought I'd just continue that streak and just get all those videos out and then maybe shift my content after this, but Today's video is on books. I think like most of us, we were an avid reader when we were a kid, and then there's sort of like that shift when you start to grow up, you start to get busier, or you get a phone. I feel like a lot of kids have this time period where they just lose reading, uh, and it just sort of falls out of their life. And so I thought I'd take this video to explain how I rekindled my, I think you can say that, my relationship with reading, how I found it again, how I discovered it. I get a fair amount of messages from people asking like, Oh, you have these interesting perspectives. How did you form them? Where did you get these ideas from? And to be honest, a lot of it comes from reading. To be fair, a lot of it has come from my experiences, but I think reading has allowed me to bring in these outside perspectives and stories and combine that with my experiences to form my perspectives on the world. All that said, I thought I'd just take the time to talk about books today and the importance of books and just my story with books and some interesting facts about books, some science, uh, because this video is sponsored by Audible, so I thought it would just kind of work together. Um, I'll talk about that later on. But for now, we're gonna go all the way back to France, which is funny because I feel that I almost always start my stories back in France, but a lot changed in France. A lot happened in France. Um, yeah, what happens in France stays in France, except in my videos I talked about what happens in France. Anyways, as a kid, I was an avid reader. I'd read all the time. I even won like competitions in my school for reading the most minutes, which is kind of silly looking back upon, but I read a lot and I really enjoyed it. But yeah, at one point there was a shift where I went from this avid reader to not reading. I think during my middle school years and even early high school, I just lost the habit and I lost the importance of reading and the truth is going on your phone is just more stimulating, more interesting than reading and opening up a book and I think as a teen you're like, why would I ever read a book? Like it sounds silly if you have a phone, if you have YouTube, reading a book seems very bland, you know? It's just pages and words and I think it's very easy to understand why reading isn't very enticing or appetizing compared to social media. And obviously the trends show that pretty evidently. Uh, reading rates are going down, which is unfortunate. I don't know if it'll change, but at the same time, I still think it's important to highlight the importance of reading. Anyway, going back to my story, when I was living in France, I still wasn't reading, but I was going to the Anglophone bookstore once a week to have some French lessons. And every time I'd go in the store, like, I almost felt really guilty because it was covered with books on the bookshelves, the walls. I mean, there are books everywhere. And I'd walk in and it just felt like the books were staring at me. And it felt like they were whispering in my ear that, you should be reading, why aren't you reading? Reading's good for you. And eventually I cracked. And this was sort of that time period of my life where I really got into the self-help niche. And I just started becoming more curious about psychology and learning more about myself. And I stumbled upon the like self-help section of the library. It's a really small selection, but there's a book that really stood out to me. It was called 12 Rules for Life. And the title intrigued me. And I opened up the first couple of pages and there's this chapter and it started about lobsters. And I was like, all right, I'm hooked. So I bought the book and I just fell in love with it again and I forgot how fun reading is I forgot how much you learn from reading and how it's just such an incredible escape and yeah reading the book just made everything else in my life melt away if that makes sense and I got into this flow state of reading and just getting lost in the book and it was such a blissful experience, you know, um, just completely escaping from your life. And I don't think there are enough activities that we can do that really help us get outside of our life, you know? Obviously watching movies or videos can do that, but a book just really takes your mind away. And there's just something beautiful about that. And I'd say that sparked reading again for me. And it sort of became addicting after that because I was like, I learned so much from this book. What could I learn from the next book? And how can I apply that to my life? And it just sort of started this positive moment momentum or snowball effect of reading more and more and I think there are times where I read less often and there's times where I'm more excited about reading. To be transparent, I don't read every single day but I read most days, probably like five, six days a week. There's times where I just forget or I'm just tired at night. I'm like, I need to go to bed. I'd love to read right now but 
I'm tired and I'll probably just fall asleep in my book. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try to coin a term here. Reading is something that I'd classify is an unregrettable. And I think reading is one of those things like exercise or meditation or eating healthy or going to bed early. You know it's good for you, but it's hard to do it. <laughs> but when you do eventually do it, you never regret doing it, but it's just hard to form a habit. But at the end of the day, I've never regretted a run. I've never regretted going to bed early. I've never regretted eating healthy because it always makes you feel better. But the things that are unregrettable are really hard to do. And so this morning when I decided to make this video, I was curious to learn more about why reading is so important and just the science behind it and the cognitive effects that it has in you. So I'm just gonna read just off my computer. I'm not gonna try to memorize this or we're gonna keep it casual. I'm just gonna read off my computer, uh, some facts, some articles, and some just paragraphs that I've compiled together that I think add some interesting value to this video. The first article started off with, in modern times, most people feel overwhelmed and stressed the majority of the time. Our stress comes from work, family responsibilities, and relationships, and the fast pace of life in general. We don't give ourselves nearly enough leisure time anymore, and that rapid pace may explain the sharp increase of mental illness today. With so many stimuli to shift through, how can we know what we need to pay attention to and what we can ignore? However, we can find ways to turn everything off for a while and relax our minds. Perhaps we should look no further than our bookshelves to find ways to reduce our stress and increase happiness. And so this is what I found really fascinating. There is a study done by the University of Sussex, which I actually looked at applying to because they, I think they combined a major of like business and psychology and entrepreneurship. Anyways, so in the study that they conducted, they found that reading just six minutes per day can lower stress by 68%, which is, really mind-boggling, only six minutes can do that. <laughs> That's crazy, only six minutes. I feel like meditation could have a very similar effect, but yeah, that's fascinating. And to follow this up, they found that reading proved to be 600% more beneficial than fighting stress than playing a video game, 300% more useful than going for a walk, and it's also more effective than drinking a cup of tea or listening to music. I can understand why it would help more than playing video games, because I feel like that kind of increases your stress and that's a lot going on for your mind, but going for a walk, I found that really interesting. I guess when you're going for a walk, you're still in your mind and in your head about things, and I think reading really takes you outside of your head and it immerses you into a completely different world and universe. And yeah, I just found that really interesting. I think everyone has six minutes per day to read. And even if you're just reading before you go to bed at night, I think it's a great habit and something I've done to help me fall asleep. Going on your phone is probably the worst thing you can do before bed and reading, especially if you choose a nonfiction book, will probably put you right to sleep. Another thing, this is a quote from Jean Twenge from the American Psychological Association site was published. She said that there's no lack of intelligence among young people, but they do have less experience in focusing for longer periods of time and reading long form text. She said that being able to read long form text is crucial for understanding complex issues and developing critical thinking skills. Democracy is informed voters and involved citizens who can think through issues and that might be more difficult for people of all ages now that online information is the norm. I think this brings up probably the one thing that concerns me the most about sites like TikTok and social media and that's honestly why I've refrained from really going in on TikTok even though there's a lot of opportunity there. Something about feeling like I am contributing to lowering attention spans feels morally wrong to me and that's why I stay on YouTube and that's why I make long form content. But the ability to critically analyze and think through and problem solve is so important and, and I don't know if social media prompts us to critically think. And I'd probably say that my attention span is decreased but I'm trying to increase it. And it does feel like an uphill battle at times. It's not easy. We have everything we want right in front of us. We have all access to anything. We can watch whatever we want. We can read whatever we want online. We can stop what we want. And we become sort of spoiled with information and just media and content online, which I think in and of itself plays a role in decreasing attention spans. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. I could probably go on and on about the whole philosophical aspect of reading and expanding your consciousness, going into other realities and all of that. But I'm gonna try to touch upon some more concrete uh, correlations that have been found with reading. In particular, the New Zealand Council for Educational Research found that continuing the habit of reading widely into teenage years, all right, I'm gonna list a lot of things right here. This is what they found. It helped teens deal with the increasingly complex world and understand some of the adult issues they will have to grapple with. It helps them know that they aren't alone and that others may be thinking and feeling the same way they do. 
It also helps them open lines of communication, particularly if parents, teachers, librarians provide opportunities to discuss what teens are reading. It also helps them share and see how others have found solutions to problems. It's helped them develop their vocabulary, broaden their imagination, improve their writing, and apparently it's helped kids gain confidence when speaking. I think there are numerous benefits for reading and just about reading in general, um, but those are some specific ones which are good. <laughs> Dr. David Lewis, a researcher and cognitive neuropsychologist. He said that losing yourself in a book is the ultimate relaxation, which I think probably explains why it helps decrease stress more than walking does. He said that it doesn't really matter what book you read, by losing yourself in a thoroughly engrossing, 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 I don't even know, <laughs> engrossing book, you can escape from the worries and stresses of everyday life and spend a while exploring the domain of the author's imagination. I think you really summarized that in a great way. But it also says that this is more than merely a distraction. He added that it's an active way of engaging the imagination as the words on the printed paper stimulate your creativity and cause you to enter which is essentially an altered state of consciousness. I think you really summarized that in a really awesome way. Getting lost in books is something I really wanna focus on doing. I think more recently or just in general or in the past in history, I've been caught up in reading a lot of nonfiction because I just wanna learn, um, but I haven't taken the time to really delve into fiction novels. I think I have an issue with just trying to learn like concrete facts instead of taking larger lessons from books that are fiction and don't necessarily just lay it out clearly for you. I think being able to interpret the message and meaning is really important, again, for critical thinking. I just read Jonathan Livington Siegel. I think that's the title of the book. Jonathan Livingston, oh, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. It's kind of like a tongue twister, uh, which is fiction, incredible. I really recommend you check that out. Um, it is a fictional piece that really got me to step back and think, and more so in a way that a nonfiction book has done to me in the past. It allowed me to escape and get out of my mind. Again, this video is sponsored by Audible. I love Audible, I use it every single day when I'm cooking lunch, when I'm sleeping in the house, or doing any just household chores. Audible has thousands of titles, but it's not just compromise of audiobooks. The great thing about the Audio Plus catalog is that there are podcasts, you can listen to guided fitness and meditation tracks, there are also sleep tracks to help you get better rest, and whether you're on the go or just laying and relaxing in your room, Audible makes for a really fun and seamless listening experience. If you're not sure where to start, I highly recommend that you listen to Atomic Habits by James Clear. Listening to this audiobook is the perfect step in the right direction if you're looking to reshape your life or really understand the ins and outs of your habits and why you do certain things and how to shape the way you act. Uh, I just find it really fascinating and I highly recommend that you check it out. You can visit audible.com slash maxr or text maxr to 500, 500 to start your free 30 day trial today. Again, you can go to audible.com slash maxr or text maxr to 500, 500 to Start your free 30 day trial today. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the other video. <laughs> I wanted to do some research actually on audiobooks because I know a lot of people are skeptical of audiobooks and the effects that they can have because it's very different from reading and the tangible act of opening and reading a book and the paper on the words. But there are actually some great benefits to listening to audiobooks, especially if you're trying to learn another language. It can help enable us to listen to expressive speech and get familiar with a variety of dialects and accents. So a lot of you guys comment on my channel that you're trying to learn English or another language. I think this is a really great way to improve your language learning ability. A lot of my time in France, I spent listening to French in school, just my teacher lecturing, and it really helped me during a research study in New York. It stated that listening to a fluent reader can actually improve your reading skills and make you a more just proficient reader in general. And the great thing about audiobooks is that they're read in really interactive and fun ways, and apparently this can raise the IQ of children by six points, which I thought was pretty interesting. To wrap this up, originally I was gonna make this video about the five books that have changed my life, or that every teenager should read, but after giving it more thought, I wanna read some more books before I distinctively promote five books. So I'm gonna give that some more time, but I thought it's still important to talk about reading and again, it tied in with the sponsorship of Audible really well. But yeah, I'd love to open up this conversation in the comments, your experience with reading, why you read, why you don't read, any advice, books you have to recommend. I'm always looking to read new books. But yeah, I'm changing up the style a little bit, keeping it casual. Um, but I thought I'd wrap this up with one last quote that said, wisdom is about being able to think, 
act and speak with clear and profound insights into topics. Wise people are people who have had a lot of experiences and have thought in a lot of depth about life. Fortunately, reading books can give you wisdom over time. That's because you'll read about other people's experiences and insights and you'll be able to learn from their wisdom. Many books have what we call a moral of the story. The moral of the story is a message or insight about life, ethics, relationships, etc. And that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I thought that was a really beautiful way to wrap it up. Obviously there's so much more I could talk about with regard to reading, uh, but those are just my current thoughts and some interesting things that I read this morning. Again, this is really casual and a different style of video, but yeah, I just thought I'd talk about reading a little bit today. Uh, right now, I'm currently staying in Boulder, Colorado. As you can probably see, the background's a little bit different. Um, there are the mountains. But yeah, more on why I'm here soon. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video. And for now, I'll see you guys in Perspectopia. Much love. Bye. <laughs>